In this video, we are going to discuss about the recent uh, vulnerability of remote code execution discovered on F5 Big IP devices and what actions you need to take in order to mitigate or fix it permanently. Let's get started. Let us first understand what is TMUI. It mainly represents your traffic management user interface. It is also called as configuration utility or GUI in the way that you try to access the device. The TMUI can be accessed via your management port or can be accessed via your self IP. Now talking about the remote code execution vulnerability, there are two different attack vectors. One is your unauthenticated user or attacker. And then this vulnerability can also be exploited using authenticated users, even with least privileges. And they can use this vulnerability to exploit and run various commands across your FI devices, try to disable various services, and in turn result into complete compromise of the system. So with this, let's go and have a look on the device and discuss about this vulnerability. At present, you can see I'm able to access my graphical user interface or the configuration utility of my FI, but I have not logged in. So I'm now at present unauthenticated user. At this point of time, if I try to access my configuration utility by running this specific URL, you can observe, let me just refresh this. I'm able to get the details of admin user, even though I have not even authenticated. Still, I'm able to get this information as an unauthenticated user. Let me show you another request. For example, if I'm trying to access this file, etc pass wd, even though I have not authenticated, I'm able to read the contents of this file. Let me also show you another way you can see here I'm able to read the contents of my license file even without authentication so with this the attackers can exploit your f5 in in different manner so let's first see how can we avoid this situation so F5 has published a solution article, which is this article in which they have mentioned the different versions in which this specific vulnerability is fixed. So first of all, it is very, very important that you upgrade all your FI devices to this version. If at this point of time, it is not possible for you to upgrade all your de devices to this version, there are certain mitigations, but in the long run to completely fix this vulnerability, it is highly recommended that you upgrade your devices to this specified version. So let's have a look first in terms of mitigations. We have option to restrict based on the self IP as well as the management IP address. Let me have a look on my F5. Let's first log into F5. In here, if I go to my network, self IPs, assuming if your self IP is exposed to internet, once you click on the self IP, you will see an option for port lockdown. If your setting is allow default, which means it will allow you to be able to connect to your um, configuration utility via this self IP. Let me just show you. So for example, in here for this, 
IP address if I am trying to access, you know, I am I, able to get to my configuration utility of my F5. With this, I can log in and do the various tasks. So ideally, I would not want this to be exposed to my external users. So the way to restrict this access would be if If I click on here and change this port lockdown setting to allow none and then click on update. After clicking on update, if I now try to load this again, You know, you, you can see it is not getting loaded. So this is this was about a self IP limiting the self IP. Now let's come back to our management interface. So if I go to system platform in here, in order for you to access or limit the access to F5. In terms of SSH, you can use this option. Instead of allow address from this drop down, you can specify a range of uh, IPs which only will have access to your SSH of the F5. Now, um, starting version 14.1, there is another feature which is security in order for you to limit the access of users who have access to your um, management interface. So let's see if I click on security in here, I can define various rules based on who will be having access to my management port. And the best part is it does not require even though um, the format in which you write these rules is similar to AFM. You do not need any license for AFM. So for example, in here, if I click on add, so in this first, you have to define all your allow rules and then you, you have to define your block rules. So for example, let's say at present, I would just define as block and order. I'll choose at last and source any destination is any, and I want that action to be either drop or reject. So for, for example, let me choose it as a reject. So I have defined this. Now let me also define I will not be able to, you know, access the system. One second, let me just cancel this. Now since I have applied the block rule first, you will see that I, I lost my access to the device itself. So I can revert this back by going into TMSH. Modify security firewall management IP rules. Should be delete. Now let me come back to my F5 and refresh this page.
Okay, it is still not loading. Let's go back to our CLI and let me So I'll modify the firewall security rules, modify secure security, firewall, management IP rules, rules, then delete all. Okay, now let's come back to our F5. Now I can see I'm able to access my F5. So always make sure whenever you are trying to add this rule, add the rule, allow rule first and then add the block rule. So for example, in here, I will just set this as allow and to, to call any source, I would specify my IP address. from where I'm trying to access the system or the specific set of source IPs, which I need to allow. And then destination will be the IP address of my F5. And action is accept. And this logging, if you want to enable, you can enable it. I missed a dot. Okay. Finished. So now I have added the allow rule. Then I'll click on add and I'll define a block rule. Any source, any destination action can be drop or reject and logging. I can enable this. Click on finish. So with this, you have now defined the list of IP or the source IP, which will have access to my um, device, the management port and the list of any, any other IPs, which will try to um, access the F5 will get rejected. So now you can see, since I'm trying to access from this IP, the counts, are also continuously increasing. And by default, if you want this logging to be enabled, you have to make sure that if you go to logs, configuration, log publisher, this default management ACL log publisher, you have this local syslog allowed. With this being allowed, if you try to monitor your var log LTM, Let me do a tail. You can see the attempts from the source IP being accessed to my F5. And uh, ev everything which is allowed will be, be shown as allow accept or if it is to be blocked, then block reject policy. Where, where is it matching? So all these logs you can monitor on, on in your var log LTM, but provided that if, if you enable it, you need to make sure that this local syslog is selected in your default management ACL log publisher. So this is one way in which you can restrict your management access, but this feature is available starting your version 14.1.0. If you are running on older versions, you can also try modifying the default HTTP allow list. So let me just also show you that. If you type list 
access HTTPD. Now in this list, I can add the list of IPs that I want to have management access. So for example, if I click on modify sys httpd allow and replace all with my list. Let's say for example, I want to access once I allow only this IP address to have access to my system on the management port. Then after this, I'll just save the config. After saving the config, if now I would try to access my management port, you know, I will see that I'm getting a forbidden error. It is, it will not let me have access to the system itself because in my case, I have only one single source IP and I have added an IP address, which is a dummy IP address. But in here you can restrict the way that you try to access the system. So you can specify the list of IPs that you want to have access to your management port. In my case, this is a dummy IP. So that's why I lost my management access and I'm not able to access the configuration utility anymore. Now let me revert this back. And again, save the config. Now my configuration is saved. Now if I try to reload, I'm back to the FI screen, I'm able to access this. Now this was the two different ways in which you can limit your FI management port. And we also discussed about how you can limit the self IP access towards your FI. Now coming back to the vulnerability, you, we, we have seen how an unauthenticated user was able to uh, get the important files like big IP dot license file. He was able to get to ETC pass WD. And so in, in this specific case, if I has provided you also with a workaround, wherein if you include this part in your HTTPD configuration, you will see that the unauthentic unauthenticated user will not no longer be able to you know get to those log files let me just show you a demo for example in in my case let me first modify this configuration so in order to modify this i will just edit my hdbd configuration Once you open up this file, you will see an option as include none. This is what you need to edit. So I'll just type I to go into the insert mode, then move my cursor towards the include page and delete this part. And now let me copy back this, these specific lines. Let me just delete the include part. Okay, so now I have successfully added this. I'll come out of the insert mode by escape and then write this file, WQ, save. And after making these changes, we need to restart our HTTPD service. So first before that, let's just 
save the config and restart it. After restarting my HTTPD service, let's try accessing the same page, what we accessed in the beginning as an unauthenticated user. Let me log, log out from here. So at present, I am not logged in on my system. And this time, if I try to browse the same page, which earlier was accessible for me. Now this time you can see it is giving me a 404 error. The requested URL is not found. So this again is a mitigation. It does not fix the complete issue in terms of um, when the vector is an authenticated user as uh, maybe as a least privileged user, you, you have created a guest user who still will be able to do certain things even after you implement this. So that is why F5 is suggesting to make sure that you upgrade all your F5 devices with these versions. So with this, I have covered and shown you how you can secure F your F5 via your, for your management interface, via your self IP and via doing the change for your HTTPD configuration. I hope you have found this informative and we will keep contributing towards the security of F5. Thank you for watching.